Hi, I'm Joe from JD Medical, and I will be taking you through the JD Medical uh, LABC 2000D Large Animal Ventilator Complete System. Um, this machine is the LABC 2000D. Um, the anesthesia machine and ventilator are combined in one. Um, it offers three modes of operation, which we will go through. Um, I will start with the basic components and what is included with the machine. Um, here we have the base machine with the isofluorane vaporizer, um, 30 liter bag, oxygen hose, we have a set of breathing hoses, clear corrugated breathing hoses, a patient Y piece with sampling port for CO2, and a set of endotracheal tube adapters, 16, 20, 22, 26, and 30 millimeter. That is what is included with the machine. Uh, there are, there may also be some additional accessories uh, that are purchased with the machine, but as far as what comes with the machine, that is what is, is that is what is included. Um, so the basic components of the machine are as follows. Um, oxygen inlet comes in through the back. Here, where we have the uh, gas inlet through the oxygen hose into a regulator, which shows the operating pressure. Standard operating pressure on this machine should be between 40 and 60 PSI, uh, preferably between 50 and 60. Uh, the input, if it is higher, can be adjusted here to make sure that it does not go over 50. It is preset at about 50 PSI. Um, from there, the gas goes to the flow meter and to the flush. Um, gas, fresh gas comes from the flow meter through the vaporizer out of the vaporizer and down into the fresh gas, which is down below um, the absorber. So this, uh, the fresh gas with the isofluorine and the oxygen comes in uh, down below the absorber and it goes to the bellows and to the patient uh, through the inspiratory valve. Um, the gas is then rebreathed or exhaled through the um, expiratory valve, down through the absorber, and back through the system. Um, down below the absorber is the moisture drain valve, um, so this T down here will allow moisture to accumulate um, in there instead of building up in the absorber, and when this gets full of, uh, of exhaled moisture, um, the valve here can be opened to drain the liquid. Um, and then closed immediately thereafter. This valve should always be closed, uh, but it, it's only open to drain the moisture. Um, the absorber has a funnel system that directs the moisture down into that T. Um, so, again, directional valves, inspiratory and expiratory. Uh, the adjustable pop-off uh, pressure limiting or pop-off valve is here, which in ventilator mode should always be closed. Um, you have your absorber, which gets filled with uh, CO2 absorbent granules, um, and your bellows canister here. Uh, there are some additional components below and above, but the, ma the major components are what I'm going through here, and I'll touch on some of the others when we talk about maintenance. Um, your flow rate is adjusted through the knob here on the flow meter. Um, the flow meter is in is a zero to ten liter flow meter, which covers all the flow that you should need for any large animals. Um, those are the passive components. The control of the ventilator is uh, is through the green box here, um, and as well as your flush up above, which will fill the bellows with uh, with pure oxygen. Uh, to turn the ventilator function on and off, there's a rotary knob here that is marked on and off. Um, and then the controls of the ventilator, which we'll go over, are on the left and right uh, and on the front of the ventilator. The pressure gauge here is going to read the, the patient pressure. Um, let's see. 
let's go ahead and get started. So with the, to hook up the machine, we want to hook up the gas to the uh, machine in the back through the, or through the uh, fresh gas uh, supply hose. And we connect the breathing circuit tubes to the inspiratory and expiratory valves. And then we have the patient Y piece. The standard Y piece has a locking ring that unscrews. And for demonstration, I will use an adapter that I have. It fits on here. There's a tapered bevel that seals. The ring goes over it and it screws down tight. This fits inside the endotracheal tube. And then you have your sampling port for CO2 here. Um, for demonstration purposes and for pressure checking, we don't actually need to use the Y. So I'm gonna take that off, but I wanted to show that so that you understand how that connects. So for pressure checking and demonstration, the easiest way to do that is to take one breathing hose and connect it between the inspiratory and expiratory valves. This will allow us to demonstrate the function of the machine. So right now in the off position, we will turn it on and then start with the arms on the bird, which are the starting effort, which is the effort that the patient or animal has to exert to start a breath if you're doing it uh, assisted. The pressure, which is the inspiratory pressure, the maximum pressure that the machine will ventilate to, um, and then the inspiratory flow rate, uh, we're going to start pretty low because we're going to run a pressure check and I'll explain that and we'll leave the timer off. So the inspiratory flow rate is how fast the breath is going to go, the, the rate of flow um, that, uh, that is going to be pushed towards the patient. Um, and then the expiratory time here functions as the breaths per minute uh, adjustment. So this controls the amount of time in between breaths. So we set the pressure, we'll start at 20. Uh, the effort will leave at about 20. And to start, we will turn the inspiratory flow rate to about, let's say seven for demonstration. The timer is off, so it will not automatically trigger a breath. If the timer were to fail and you need to trigger a breath, there is a red button on the side that just needs to be pushed and it will manually trigger a breath. Let's increase the flow. So you can see how that breath is achieved much faster as we increase the flow rate. So to do a pressure check, we set it at a very low flow and a high pressure. There's a notch when you adjust the pressure higher and it stops it. So if you want to go above, you have to manually do that by pulling it out. We'll leave it at the notch, which should be around 60 centimeters of water pressure and trigger a breath at a very low flow rate. So that's showing us that we don't have any leaks. The gas, or the pressure comes up very smoothly with a very low flow rate. So effectively we have no significant leaks. If we do have a leak, say if I open the pop-off valve and we trigger a breath, it will not complete the cycle. It cannot achieve the pressure until I turn that down. So if it starts to hang up, then we know that we have a leak. So that's at a higher flow rate. Now to demonstrate the expiratory timer, we'll open that. As you open it further, it will go faster. And slower as you turn it 
clockwise until it's off. So we'll leave all those in the off position. Starting effort on the ventilator is the effort that the patient has to exert if you want the patient to be able to trigger a breath. So if you sit, generally we leave that at about 20. Um, increasing the starting effort makes it more difficult for them to, to trigger a breath. Decreasing the starting effort makes it easier. So if you would like the ventilator to assist the patient that's already spontaneously breathing, you can let this you can let the patient trigger the breaths. So if they give a little starting, a little starting effort, the machine will then trigger and give them a full breath. Um, that is explained in detail uh, in the manual as well. Uh, so going back over the machine, um, that is the ventilator mode. Um, we can go into more depth on those, but I just kind of want to give a quick run through. Um, the, that is the assist and the control ventilation mode. Um, the other mode of, the, of operation of the machine is completely passive. So you can completely eliminate the bellows by taking the side mouth hose, the short hose, and disconnecting it from the bellows and connecting it to the back of the inspiratory valve on the side mount, and then taking your other hose and connecting it here. So with the full breathing circuit, it looks like this. So now this is a completely passive system. So the fresh gas goes to the patient through this hose and this valve, then exhales back out through the absorber and so forth, so that completes the circle. In this case, you would, be, you would adjust the pressure with the APL valve here, um, and the bag would be in use. The bag is not normally in use when the ventilator is running, uh, but when you switch to this valve, then the bag uh, is your gas reservoir for the patient. Um, so it's a simple just changing of the hose from here to here, here, here to change ventilator modes. Um, let's see, that is the main operation of the machine. I do want to cover a couple maintenance items. Um, first off, to change the absorbent, it's very simple. Disconnect the quick connect hose on the top, which is this pressure sensing line. Take the exhaust hose off, and there are four thumb screws, along with four nylon washers. I want to make sure not to lose the washers, so I usually just like to push straight up and then take the washers off, and then make sure that they go back on. So you can set this plate aside. The canister lifts straight out. Dump it out, clean it, um, and then refill it. And when you refill it, just set straight down and should align with the center hole on the seal. The plate goes back on, it should center itself.
washer so make sure that they're safe. And set the plate aside. And the bellows come out. You can empty the bellows, leave them to dry um, in between patients. That's always a good idea. Um, the other thing that you want to make sure is that there is uh, a good valve in the bottom plate. There is a small, what looks like a bicycle tire valve in the very center of the bellows canister. Um, there are three extras that come with the machine along with a tool. That valve needs to be in good condition. So you can visually check it while the machine is assembled. Um, you can also check it with the bellows out um, and make sure that the pin is pointing straight up and is not bent. If it's bent, it will cause a leak. Um, that should be changed every about six months or so. When you put the bellows in, there is a ridge on the bellows inside that fits just inside the canister. So you need to make sure that that ridge is aligned and centered inside the canister. Otherwise, you will have a leak. if you have to, um, do not use any alcohol. Alcohol will destroy any of the clear plastic items on the machine, so please use a mild soap and water um, and consult us if there's any stronger disinfection that needs to, be, uh, needs to be done. We can make sure you use a safe chemical with no alcohol leads. Um, other than that, that is the, the main, uh, those are the main operating aspects of the machine. Um, the vaporizer is very simple. It's filled through the front by removing the fill well uh, cap and pouring the isochlorine straight in. Um, it drained by using the flipping the plug over, or the cap over, and unscrewing the fill screw or the drain screw, um, and then tightening it back when it's drained. If you need to drain it, which you shouldn't need to, uh, percentage is dialed in using the top dial and the release here. And other than that, that's pretty much it. Um, maintenance wise, if anything happens to the green box, that does need to come to us for service. We can do an exchange, uh, which is probably, which is a lot of times the easiest, uh, unless there's time and we have, we can uh, get it into service and then ship it back out. Um, the exhalation valve assembly here can go bad. Um, that is a frequently uh, replaced uh, item on these machines, um, every few years they do need to be replaced. Um, you will notice that the inspirations will lose some gas if that does start to go bad. So that's a good replacement part to keep in mind. Um, that and the bottom plate valves are the two most common. Um, occasionally the orange seals on the absorber and bellows might need to be replaced as well, but um, and you can contact us for those. Um, the valves are labeled uh, with directional arrows on them. So inspiratory and expiratory. There is an extra inspiratory valve if you're only using it as a ventilator uh, or the ventilator, this valve does go bad. This can be swapped for that temporarily um, in a pinch to get things uh, going again. Um, and yeah, everything else is pretty straightforward. Uh, if you have any questions, please let us know. Uh, again, I'm Joe with JD Medical uh, and I uh, hope uh, you've enjoyed the video.